violence and other kind of violence. What's good, Cyberspace? It's the Black Gen Z Mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe. Let's get into the video. The suspect is now in the Rock County Jail on roughly $2.1 million cash bond. Marcus Randall L. is accused of shooting and killing two women in Janesville more than 10 months ago. Mm. NBC 15's Elise Romus watched the proceedings today. And Elise, we heard from family members of the victims today. Yeah, Amy, and fearing for their safety, that really sums up what the victim's family members felt about bond for Marcus Randall L. this afternoon. Now, they were concerned about the possibility of Randall L. being able to post that amount, citing that his brother is a current NFL assistant coach, and he has that money to help him out. Dang, so we have a former, um, I believe, Wisconsin football player, Brother is a NFL player and bro is caught up on a double homie. Okay. Bro got caught up. He deleted two women for pretty much no reason. And this is a story that isn't really getting much traction in the community. It really isn't. A lot of it's been on the hush hush. I haven't really heard much from ESPN. Maybe I'm missing something, but I haven't heard too much from ESPN about this. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I had to really search for this one. So it's not looking good for the uh, NFL. Oh, among those speaking, Justine Watson, Sierra's mom, she says that her daughter gave him a place to stay and met her family. She says his past actions have shown he doesn't deserve to be released on bond and his record shows he has no regard for human life. Mm. I am confident he is a monster who has done this to my family and the family of the other victim. Wow. He brutally murdered my daughter, Sierra, and her friend, Brittany. <laughs> By shooting them in cold blood and they dang man um a lot of sisters have experienced this okay i'm speaking to the brothers a lot of brothers are crashing out guys crashing out completely domestic violence gone extremely wrong deleting their partners um, but when you have a relationship, like it, it hits hard when the sister is deleted, no doubt. But when you have these interracial relationships and the brother is crashing out like this, um, <clears throat> it raises alarms. Okay. And other people start to get involved. And I'm just going to tell you guys right now, it, it's going to start looking real ugly. Um, for the community in the future you know we need to get our act together and like yesterday because as a collective it's it's really not looking good and there are a lot of things that can be used against us um on a global scale that's what i'll say so you have to understand that the world is going to globalize it. It doesn't matter whether you want it to or not. Uh, we have pretty much become a borderless state in the U S so things are about to get real shifty and, uh, you know, we've got the recession, you know, in full throttle. It's a lot of things happening at one time, a lot of bills being passed under people's noses, while they're focused on classified documents in Biden's crib, that he's still passing bills. So a lot of things being done, it, it, it's different out here, y'all. Leaving them to die in the cold snow. Now my daughter's four girls and Brittany's two children must grow up without their mothers. 
Now, Sierra leaves behind four children. Brittany, she had two children of her own. If Randall L. is able to post bond, he is ordered not to have contact with several people. He is not allowed to possess a weapon, mm -hmm. and he cannot leave the state of Wisconsin. The fact that they would give this man a bond and he deleted two women is different. Live in the newsroom tonight, Elise Romas, NBC 15 News. Elise, thank you. Now, let's just go over the background of this case. Investigators say 30-year-old Sierra Winchester and 27-year-old Brittany McAdory were last seen alive going to a TA Express gas station around 2 in the morning on February 10th. Investigators believe they plan to meet Randall L. A little more than an hour later, a passing motorist spotted the victims lying in the road with multiple gunshot wounds just a couple hundred feet away. Mm. They later died at the hospital. Following the shootings, prosecutors say Randall L. drove off in McAdory's SUV, which was later found in Illinois. Side trial and the shooting deaths of two women in Janesville begins today. Marcus Randall L. is facing charges of shooting and killing Sierra Winchester and Brittany McAdory. A Randall L. played football at the University of Wisconsin from 2004 to 07. NBC 15's Marcus Arswold recaps the first day in Rock County Court. Prosecution and defense gave their opening statements mm. in court. Then the prosecution called their first witnesses throughout the afternoon. Remember, it's the prosecution's job to prove Marcus Rand L. killed the two victims beyond reasonable doubt. Janesville taxi driver Michelle Edwards Horton testified. She discovered the two victims on the ground in the snow at 3 a.m. while she was driving a passenger. Wow. So... <sighs> This is getting wild, guys. I mean, this dude left all types of evidence behind. All types of witnesses, even though he deleted them because he thought that they were witnesses to his shenanigans. It's, it's, it's just all bad. She gave emotional testimony and the defense played audio from her 911 call. Just two girls playing here. I didn't know the situation. I just thought somebody had... He got in a fight, maybe one got knocked out. I didn't realize until <laughs> Bree opened up her mouth and then I seen the whole, just put two and two together, they were shot. Randall mm -hmm. L's defense questioned her. They asked if there's any way she could have told how the victims arrived at Midvale and Deerfield Drive. Edward Norton says she could not tell. The prosecution also called other witnesses to the stand who live near Midvale and Deerfield in an apartment complex. They say they heard three loud bangs the night in question. Bang. Prosecutors will continue questioning witnesses and bringing them to the stand at 8.30 a.m. Wednesday. For now, in Janesville, Marcus Arswold, NBC 15 News. Week one of the Rock County double homicide trial wrapped up this afternoon. Former UW-Madison football player Marcus Randall L. is facing two counts of first-degree homicide in the deaths of Sierra Winchester and Brittany McAdory. In February of 2020, NBC 15's Mark Sarsvold was inside the Rock County Courthouse in Janesville with a recap from today's proceedings. Friends of Randall L. and Winchester testified in court about the relationship between the victim and the defendant. One of Randall L.'s friends, Shannon Wingate, testified that she knew he was a drug dealer and that he sold weed, pills, and cocaine. Damn. <laughs> hey, man. He was a plug, but he didn't have enough to make bail, man. Sheesh. She also testified that she heard him say he believed Winchester was working as an informant for the police trying to set him up. Mm. Brandon Tobias, another friend, also testified as a friend of Randall L. and Winchester. Tobias testified that he'd seen the two argue, but then gave conflicting answers and said he did not know about Winchester working with Randall L. Uh, hmm. So he was called to testify and he gave conflicting statements. What do we call that, Communita? Are we, you know, are we saying that he was snitching on this case? I'm interested to know. There's been a suggestion in this trial that Miss Winchester worked for Mr. Randall. Did you know that to be true? No. Did you know it to be true that Ms. Winchester was selling yoppers or any other kind of dope for Mr. Randall? No. Other testimony came from employees at TA Travel Center in Janesville. 
The gas station employees who saw Winchester in the early morning hours before she was killed say she was acting anxious when she entered and purchased a fountain drink. Mm. The prosecution says they've got about 10 witnesses left to testify. Then it'll be the defense's turn to call their witnesses. Court is set to resume Monday at 8.30 a.m. In Janesville, Marcus Arswold, NBC 15 News. Yo, what's good, BGZM News 17 family? I'm at the corner of Jesse Jackson and Marcus Garvey. And I got some bad news for you. As you can see, I lost my job. I'm out here living in cardboard boxes outside of boarded up vacant homes. YouTube said I'm done getting money out here in these streets. They even took my funky ass suit. So anything right now would help. So go ahead and hit that Cash App, hit that PayPal. Hit that GoFundMe, hell, cop the merch. Or if you want to make the long-term commitment to the Jinquavius Jackson Fund, join the Patreon so that I can continue to put out top-notch content each and every day. Also, <laughs> check out the Rumble, where there is absolutely no censorship link in the description box below. Hey, yo, 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 ain't that that, that nigga did Quavius? Yo, I recognize No, that's Chris not me no more. Hey, hey, yo, run your pop. Y'all tell me what they say. Do the opposite of Antonio Brown and take what all your What more do you want from me? Testimony continues in a former UW-Madison football player's homicide trial and the killings of two women in Janesville. Marcus Randall Al is accused of fatally shooting Sierra Winchester and Brittany McAdory in February of 2020. And NBC 15's Marcus Arsvold was in Rock County Court all day, the victim's family taking the stand. A long day of testimony as prosecutors brought 11 witnesses to the stand. This included Janesville Police Department officers who'd responded to the initial scene where the victims were found, as well as the investigation afterward. We also heard from the victim's family for the first time. Uh -oh. The prosecution asked Sierra Winchester's father, Clarence Winchester, to identify his daughter, shown in gas station video here. She called me about a week before the incident happened. And said that she had talked me. Victim Brittany McAdory's sister Cheyenne Galbrecht also took the stand. She spoke about the last conversation she had with her sister the night before McAdory was killed. Well, I spoke with her on Sunday the 9th. Um, she called just to make sure because it was a snowstorm. A number of Janesville police officers testified. One shared his experience finding one of the victims. In body camera footage showed the interaction. So bro deleted both of them based off of the suspicion that they were working with um, police officers as informants. And I don't think they were, honestly. I don't think they had a case before he deleted them. You know, and maybe he was heavily using the dope that he was selling and that could have influenced his decision. But looks like my man went on some type of trip and thought it up in his mind that hey she's ratting on me with no evidence and man it's ridiculous she I, I tried to ask her what happened she had a lot of blood on her face she tried to i guess tried to tell me what happened it was she was making a like a grunting noise as if you would uh have gotten hurt Damn. Another officer described pictures of evidence collected after the killings during the investigation. The jury saw pictures of pools of blood on the scene, teeth, and shell casings. Finally, images of McAdory's Jeep were shown. The SUV was found in Illinois, and investigators say someone tried to burn it from the inside. Mm. An Illinois snowplow driver testified he'd picked up Randall L. after he was walking on the side of a highway, stranded near a black Jeep. He says Randall L. told him he was out of gas. He took him to a gas station. He filled up a gas tank and then brought him back to that Jeep where Randall L. then left. The driver says afterward he found out Randall L. was a suspect in the double homicide. Mm. In Janesville, Marcus Arsvold, 
NBC 15 News. Around 5.30 p.m. today, we learned the verdict in the trial of Marcus Randall L. He has been found guilty on all four counts for killing Sierra Winchester and Brittany McAdory in Janesville in February of 2020. NBC mm. 15's Marcus Oswald has been following the trial since its start. It took the jury just two hours to decide that guilty verdict, and it all happened right behind me in this courtroom. And it was extremely emotional for families on both sides of the aisle. Finding Mr. Randall L. guilty of count one, um, first degree intentional. <laughs> Who is he looking up to, man? This dude is insane. He's going to jail for the rest of his life over some stupid dog. This is crazy. Homicide, count two, first degree intentional homicide. Immediately after the verdict is read, you can see the emotions running high from Randall L's family. <laughs> his family still thinking, do it, baby, his, they baby innocent, all that stuff, so. It's okay. Once the jury left the room, it did take court officials a minute to gather Randall L. as he stood there waiting to leave the vicinity. Uh-oh. <laughs> he was finna get an attitude in the courtroom. They like, time to serve your time. And he's like, hey man, don't, don't, don't touch me, bro. Don't touch me. <laughs> The afternoon started with closing arguments from the defense and the prosecution. What does common sense tell you? Common sense would tell you that the individual who brutally murdered cold blood and cold blood, Sierra and Brittany, would be the one to drive around, drive away in Brittany's blood saying, gee. There's no gun connecting him to the shooting. There's no DNA connecting him to the shooting. There's no fingerprints connecting him to the shooting. There's no witnesses connecting him to the shooting. This is a gaping hole in the state's evidence that it wants you to fill with guesswork. Hmm. If proven guilty for homicide charges, it automatically comes with a life term in prison. There is no death penalty in Wisconsin. In Janesville, Marcus Arsvold, NBC 15 News. Hmm. From News 3 Now, this is Breaking News. We, the jury, find the defendant, Marcus Randall L., guilty of first-degree intentional homicide of Sierra Winchester as a mm. party to a crime as charged in count one of the information. We begin with breaking news from the trial of Marcus Randall L. You just saw him head in his hands as a jury found the former Wisconsin Badger guilty in the murders of Brittany McAdory and Sierra Winchester. Convicted on all four charges he faced are Catherine Murray. All four charges, capital murder. That boy is going away. They threw him under the jail, man. Was it worth it, bro? And the fact that he was like his age and just crashing out like this. Mm, 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 mm. The super athletic gremlins are on demon time. Merck has covered this trial from day one and joins us live from the Rock County Courthouse. And Catherine, this happened just moments ago. Can you describe the mood inside that room? Eric, as the judge read the jury's verdict, friends and family of Marcus Randall held each other and cried in sorrow for their son, while friends and family of the victims in the 2020 Janesville double homicide got a sense of relief. This verdict comes after a six-day-long jury trial. The state and defense gave its closing arguments earlier this afternoon. The state showed the jury a digital presentation of what it believed was the timeline of Marcus Randall action before, during, and after his alleged homicides. Dang, they got text too. Says Shannon Wingate drops defendant off at Midvale apartment. If anyone asks you, drop me off in Rockford, Illinois. Wow. Defendant knocks, so that's, I guess, the uh, person who was driving. Okay, Shannon Wingate. Defendant knocks on door to Chandra Hill answers. To Chandra Hill lets defendant use Alex. Um, or Alexis Dyke's cell phone. He says, I need to call my B word using Alexis's phone. Defendant calls um, Sierra at 11.52 p.m. just before midnight.
The defense told the jury there were gaps in the case that needed to be considered to charge Randall L with these crimes. The state cannot connect Mr. Randall L to the shooting, only the G. That requires not guilty verdicts on counts one and two. You have the girls picking him up at the bail. You have the defendant in the Jeep all the way until it's bombed out. All of that points to the defendant committing this crime. The jury yeah. took two hours for... You know you take an L when your lawyer dapping you up like he in the streets. <laughs> You know you just took an L when your lawyer dapping you up like that. Run it back. They practically they practically stacked up in court. <laughs> Hold on. Defendant committing this Look crime. at his handshake. Woo. The jury took two hours for deliberation. A sentencing hearing is set for May 3rd at 9 a.m. And we've been giving you live updates from this trial since the beginning. A recap of this case is available on our website right now at channel3000.com. Reporting live in Janesville, I'm... And you know, I hate to say it, but a lot of people are going to already come in the comments and, and they're going to say that unfortunately this young lady and her friend paid the toll and the community you know the super gremlins they're just giving them ammo to say that so for the people who i know are going to get triggered by that you just have to understand that you know this thing is getting out of control and and that's the only way that people are getting their ish off okay if you will that's the only way they can by making anonymous <laughs> um, different channels to comment on different stories and give their opinion because everybody's opinion is supposed to matter, right? So um, I actually want to read a couple of comments uh, after this video ends. So we're going to get into that as well. On our website right now at channel3000.com. Reporting live in Janesville, I'm Catherine Merck for News 3 Now. So um, as you guys can see, it says another hero from the National Felons League <laughs> in the sports world make millions and still can't stay out of trouble. Let's all look up to him. Wow. And then it says karma back when they lived in Harvey, Illinois, 153 Lexington Street. He sold me a fake sack of weed when we were kids, went from selling fake weed and graduated to double homicide. These super gremlins are on demon time. Gang violence and other kind of violence. So it is what it is.